Hey everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. What we have today is something that I'm kind of excited about, and I'm pretty sure anybody who collects McFarlane toys, especially the DC Multiverse or Mortal Kombat lines, is going to be excited about it as well. This is the 15-piece munitions pack from McFarlane Toys, and this is an exclusive that you can only get at McFarlandToysStore.com. Remember that double S in the in the address. I will put a link to this down in the description below. Now, if you collect McFarlane toys, especially if you collect DC Multiverse or Mortal Kombat, then you're familiar with the, the restrictions, the ban that Warner Brothers has put on putting triggered weapons with their figures. Basically, no guns with their action figures, whether it's DC Multiverse or whether it's Mortal Kombat. I know, no guns for figures based off of a game called Mortal Kombat combat but he wasn't allowed to do it i mean it's as simple as that but you may have noticed where's he at that figures like peacemaker here who came with a tomahawk he still has a triggered finger he still has a trigger hand right here even though he just came with his tomahawk and in the helmeted version just came with a sword but he still has his trigger hand right there so he has, McFarlane that is, has probably been planning this, having this idea in the back of his head for a while now. And if we take a look at our, stand up, keep standing. If we take a look at our munitions pack and we bring it up, why, what is that? Lo and behold, it might or might not look like Peacemaker's modified extended Desert Eagle in there. And you can see all kinds of weapons in here that could be used just for any character and some that you look at and you go, okay, there's Joker's extended barrel revolver right there. Um, because depending on which version of Joker you have, you may or may not have this already. Here's a pair of dual Colts that it looks like, and that would be really good once we get Grifter. I don't have Grifter yet, he's on his way, but once I do have Grifter, those will look really good in his hands. We got some future tech weapons right there. We got a grenade launcher, AK, assault rifle, uh, AR right there. And if you can see down in there, we got one other one that I'm really excited about getting is the Chicago typewriter, the Tommy gun. So he's been planning this, McFarland, that is, Todd. He's given the figures triggered hands, even though they can't come with weapons. And now he's giving us this munitions pack. And I believe it's $15, so it's like a dollar per weapon. I got two. So let's stop talking about it. Let's get these things open. Let's take a look at them, and we'll see how they look in our figures' hands. All right, something I wanted to show you, because I was concerned that all of these were going to be taped in, and we were going to have to be pulling pieces of tape off of every weapon. But what this is... It's a two-piece, let me get my fingers in there, it's a two-piece tray set. So this piece comes off, and then all of the weapons are just loose in there. Which, this is cool, because it's going to make it easy to get them out. I mean, some of these smaller ones, like the Revolver, the Mac 10 this pistol here have some tape on them just to hold them in place but the larger weapons the majority of the weapons if i turn this upside down they'll just spill out and what i like about this is that not only does it make it easy for getting the weapons out it makes it easy for putting them back in that any you're not using you can just store right back in this tray put back in the box and then they're not just loose in a tub somewhere so i dig that i really like that Okay, here we go. Here is the product out of the package. Now remember, I picked up two of the munitions packs. However, what you see here, all of this, is all from one box. So all of this will be in one munitions pack that you pick up. So let's pick up something and let's start taking a look at it. And let's start with the AK here. That, first of all, some of these have extra paint apps to them. Like the AK has the wooden stock and the wooden uh, four barrel right here. And I think that's pretty cool. I like that some of these have coloring to them. Usually it's just a brown, and you see we have a couple of silver pieces. Most of them are completely black, but I do appreciate the extra detail on some of these things where it counts. And speaking of detail, you do get a pretty decent sculpt for all of these weapons. They have some detail to them. You can see how there's the lines for the magazine down here. Whoops. Now, the magazine does not come out, okay? And you don't get any spare magazines with these, but really you're just buying it for the weapons. That's that's really what you're getting here. 
and I do really dig this AK. Now, something else that we get some extra paint apps for, thankfully, is our Chicago typewriter, the Tommy gun right here. You can see how we have a wooden grip here. We have a wooden foregrip here just before um, the little black piece that's supposed to be metal right there. They didn't paint the stock, which is confusing to me because they put brown here, they put brown here, they put brown here, but they didn't put brown in the stock. I don't get why they didn't do that. Other than that, I really like this Tommy gun. I really like this Tommy gun. This Tommy gun was one of the reasons I wanted to get this set. And the Tommy gun is one of the reasons why I got two of them. Now, let's take something here. Like, we all know what this is. This is pretty much Peacemaker's extended Desert Eagle. And I really appreciate the detail and the paint app on this as well. How this is predominantly a silver weapon and you have the black handle and you even have the black silencer, the suppressor up front. I really like the look of this. This has some weight to it. This has some girth to it, some thickness. This is, these are really well constructed. Like these are definitely worth the dollar per piece here. Now, the one thing I do want to show you, and let's take a look at the AR right here that you have some size, you have some heft to it, but like McFarlane's weapons that you get with the figures, it is very flexible and very bendy. The strongest part is the thinnest part right here in the middle, but all of them, and even take a look at the future weapon here, all of them have, well, maybe not this one so much, have some bend to them. You can really see it with the shotgun here. So it is more of that soft, rubbery, material that we're used to from McFarlane's weapons. Now, this this is personal preference. I don't completely mind them being this bendable because at least it's not like something like Shao Kahn's hammer that is eventually going to bend and warp out of out of form. I think these will pretty much hold their form. I feel like they're stiff enough, they're strong enough that they'll hold their form while they're in a character's hands, but if you put them in their hands in a bent position, it will pretty much, I feel, um, take on that shape. And you know what I mean by sometimes you put a weapon in, in a figure's hand, you get a two-handed grip on it, it's not perfect, and like the weapon just sort of bends a little while they're holding it. Here we have the RPG, and I really like this. I was really expecting the RPG just to be a doubling of the mold that they used from the Fortnite characters, but I think this is a new mold. I think this is a new sculpt for the RPG because the Fortnite one, I don't remember actually having the shoulder stock right here. So this is pretty cool. I would have liked to have seen um, additional paint apps on the RPG as well because I think this piece is supposed to be wood and I think the handle is actually wood. So I would have liked to have seen something like what they did with the AK here done to the RPG here. Now, let's get to what I'm sure you're all waiting for, and let's put these in some of the figures' hands and see how they look. So, of course, we're going to start with Peacemaker here, and we're going to start with his pistol. Now, Peacemaker is one of the ones that, even though he came with melee weapons, he came with a triggered finger right here. Not so much on his left, but definitely on his right. So, let's put that in there, and we just push and turn and there we go peacemaker has his custom pistol and i really like this i feel like this one specifically was molded with the intention of being in his hand because it fits perfectly in his hand like maybe this was originally designed to go with the figure but then they got the moratorium that no you can't do this let's Reangle this a little. Then, then they got the moratorium from Warner Brothers that no, you can't put them in. So they kept the mold and figured they would do something with it later because that fits really well. I really like how secure that is in his grip. And the reason I like that so much is if we take a look at his fellow Suicide Squad member, Bloodsport, right here. Bloodsport is another one that came with melee weapons. Um, he came with a pair of swords that had a pretty thick handle to them. And you can see that he has a trigger finger as well. But I don't think anything was ever designed with the intention of being in his hand. Because even if you take some of these beefier ones, you can see that you can see it flops around. It doesn't really hold well. 
his grip is just a little too loose. His fingers are just a little too far apart. Even if you take something with maybe a heftier piece right here. Now the AR fits okay. Actually, the AR fits real well in there. But like, I don't know, the AR just doesn't look right. I think the best thing that fits for him is this big Mamma Jamma right here. Now they don't have anything that looks like the weapon that he created at the end of Suicide Squad when things just sort of appeared and like nanotech magic made this big horkin spinny barrel weapon thingy. But I do like this for him and he holds it fairly well and he can get a two-handed grip on it. Get on there. Get on there. Whoops. See how it keeps popping out? That's frustrating. That is frustrating. It's easy to get in his hand, but he doesn't hold it perfectly well. But if you get a two-handed grip for him... Oh, it's popping out. There we go. If you get a two-handed grip, he looks good holding this big Horkin thing that I'm almost considering painting this up myself and painting it and giving it his armor color just like the weapon i think the weapon that he used at the end of suicide squad once it all finished forming was basically all the same color as his armor as well and that that looks kind of cool i like that for him now other ones of these oh wow that's put some weight on him i have to reposition him other figures here don't really hold And there. Ah, that really is weighing him forward a little. Other figures here don't really hold things very well either. And unfortunately, that is Red Hood. Now, remember, this is the Gotham Knights Red Hood, so I don't know how the other Red Hoods will do holding these things. But even if you get something like, well, first of all, his fingers, his grip fingers are way too small. They are way too small. And I didn't notice this when I was doing the review, but he does actually have very small hands for the size of this figure. Now, the nice thing about McFarlane is you can pop these off. We can find some other hands, maybe from another character or figure or something, and put them on him. But the ones that he comes with now, he came with a knife. And this hand really looks like it was molded to hold the knife. But if you put something in his hand, like even one of these 45s, His fingers don't really, I don't know, the 45 doesn't look bad. But it also looks kind of small for what you're used to seeing Red Hood packing. That, like, I wanted to put one of these deagles in here. Like, these things that it, it comes with, it looks like they're a set of, like, custom desert eagles or something. And I wanted to put one of those in there. But the hand grip is way too thick. For him to get a decent grip on it and he just doesn't really look natural holding it if the barrel wants to go down the finger doesn't really fit oops in the trigger guard <laughs> so I, mean, I guess that's not bad but you can see that it doesn't really look like a natural position so I guess that would be okay. I don't know. But those twin Desert Eagles, I'm thinking, depending on how they look whenever um, Grifter gets here, I'm really thinking of putting those in Grifter's hand. Now, we have Spawn here as well. This is the Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. This was, I think, one of the first Spawns that came out for it. This was the version that came with the sword. You can see that he even has sort of trigger fingers as well. And Spawn actually holds these things where is the let's take the ar spawn holds these things really well like he was made to hold these things <laughs> and like if you read spawn you know especially in the beginning spawn uses guns as much as he uses magic so it's not outside the realm of believability because i think he even like one of his finishers in mortal kombat he just makes guns appear out of his cape. So these look really good in Spawn's hands as well. Ah. 
Uh, peacemaker, stand up. Okay, now let's check something else out. Let's look at scale for something else. Let's bring in our six inch G.I. Joe classified Cobra Trooper. Will these work for a differently scaled figure? Well, yes and no. Like if you take one of the 45s here and you pop it in his hand. The 45 actually doesn't look bad in a six inch figure's hand. Okay, it looks good. He holds it. His hand isn't stretched out. He looks kind of natural holding it. So if we take that out and we take a look at this Mac 10 here. And I like the Mac 10. I wish it was a Newsy, but I like the Mac 10. It's kind of smaller compared to everything else. Like this actually looks out of scale a little bit when you put it in a seven inch figure's hand. But if you give it to a six inch figure, just push and twist. It works real well. Like this might actually work real well for Scarlet too, actually. But the Mac 10 looks real good in a six inch figure's hand. But if we take this out and let me show you, come here, Slade. And we put it in a seven inch figure's hand. I don't know. It looks a little small to me. I've held Mac 10s before and I don't know. That looks a little small scale wise. And I, yeah, I know there are different sizes of Mac 10s. There are different classes of Mac 10s. So I guess that's why it kind of works in seven inch and also works in six inch. So you can do with that as you will as well. Slade, get back there. Now, if we look at some of the bigger guns here, like let's take the iconic AK for our Cobra Trooper here. And that thing is just huge for him. Uh, that is like ridiculously oversized, comically oversized. It's like a big foam cowboy hat. Like it's just way too big. Even his finger in the trigger guard looks ridiculous. Interestingly enough though, for the six inch line, the grenade launcher works for, is another one that will work for both. I feel that here, if we put the hand around the foregrip, I feel like the grenade launcher would work for six inch figures as well. That might be a personal call. It might be a little big for some of you, but I think that looks pretty cool. The RPG though, <laughs> the RPG for a six inch figure is just way too big. Like it doesn't even, even with his arm at full extension, whoop, it doesn't really fit properly <laughs> that's just huge that's way too much that's way too much rocket so let's just set him aside for now and even if you want to scale reference this is the ak that came with the valiverse munitions pack that i picked up when i got sergeant slaughter and this is the ak that comes with the mcfarland toys munitions pack and you can see the size difference the scale difference you can see why the AK didn't really work in the trooper's hand. All right. Now, another series of figures that this might work for is the Spartan Collection. That maybe you want to get some more realistic weapons in their hands. Maybe you want to get something with a little bit more substance in their hands. That you can do that. Now, Noble Six here has a closed trigger finger. I need to cut that one like I did with one of the other Spartan figures, but oh, come on. they are scaled well and they do look good holding them. So you could use these for your Spartan collections too, as well as some of your other seven inch figures. I really like this pack. And I think a lot of figure collectors, especially if you collect McFarlane toys, are going to like this pack as well. This is something that was needed, not just for DC Multiverse, but for the Mortal Kombat line as well. And you can use these to pretty much pad out any of your seven inch lines. And also, as we saw, even some of them will work with a six inch line. There's some varied different types of weapons in here. You also get a few 
uh, dual wield capabilities. Like you have those two uh, twin Desert Eagles. You have those two twin Colt 45s, the M1911s. And I think that's really cool that he did stuff like that, as well as give you the options of things like even the long nose revolver that we saw that some jokers came with it, some won't. So depending on the jokers that you have, you may need that. I also really dig the shotgun. The shotgun actually works really well in the McFarlane figure's hands. I like the future tech of some of these rifles that came out, and I like how there are contemporary models as well as some old classics like, and I don't mean to keep like harping on it, but the Tommy gun. I really like having the Tommy gun. If you collect the DC Multiverse, if you collect the Mortal Kombat lines, you know that these are missing from those lines. And some of these figures were meant to have triggered weapons and they weren't able to come with them. Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Deathstroke. Like, I can't wait until we get the new Deathstroke and see how some of these look like in his hands as well. Grifter, for example, that's still coming down the line. He definitely should be dual wielding some pistols. So I really appreciate that McFarlane did this. And at $15, I think that's the price, at $15, $1 per weapon, that's not a bad deal. That's why I picked up two of these. And also, I don't think these are limited runs. Like, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be up for sale on McFarlane's website because somebody will buy one and then they'll fit out some weapons for their figures, and then they'll get more figures, and they'll need more weapons, so they'll buy another one. And who knows, depending on how this goes, maybe he'll even start to make additional munitions packs with different types of weapons, different looks, more character-specific weapons. Who knows? I, for one, hope that a second munitions pack does come out because there were some weapons that I would like to see that weren't in this one. I would like to see some straight rifles or maybe even some sniper rifles, like maybe like a 50 cal sniper rifle. I would like to see more on the submachine gun side of things. Like we got a, uh, I think we got an HK and a MAC-10 with this one. I'd like to see an Uzi with another one coming forward and some smaller, maybe even made up uh, submachine guns that we see types in the comic all the time. Yeah, maybe even some laser weapons. I mean, it is DC, it is comic books. Lasers do come out every once in a while. And it would be cool to get some laser weapons that maybe like some futuristic weapons, maybe paint them like a bright green and use them for like Green Lantern constructs or things like that. I'm just really appreciative that he actually got this out there. And I think this was a big frustration for him as well. I'm guessing that the straw that may have finally broke the camel's back was when he created Spawn a character that he created, but it was for the Mortal Kombat line, and he couldn't give his own character, who notoriously uses weapons, triggered weapons, guns, he couldn't give Spawn guns, his own creation. That may have been what finally put him over the edge and said, you know what, we're doing this, let's get it out there. Some of these really help to complete the figure. The one that stands out the most to me is Peacemaker. With his custom Desert Eagle, the look of that thing for as much as he used it in the Peacemaker series, and even for that iconic moment between him and Bloodsport at the end of the Suicide Squad. Like, he needed that. That's really the only one other than the extended barrel uh, revolver that I can think of that's in this pack that's like really a character-specific piece. But maybe you'll look through some of these and go, hey, I remember such and such wielding this. I need to get this for him and put it in his hand. One thing I forgot to mention when we were looking, when we were doing a close up look at the weapons is that they can't take blast effects. There's no hole for blast effect pegs and the ones that have closed barrels can't take the slide on blast effects. I tried that with the blast effects that I had from the Valiverse packs. They just don't work. But these just came in the mail yesterday as of the time of this recording. And I wanted to get this out there. I wanted you to be able to take a look at these. I think this is really cool. Check it out. McFarlandToysStore.com. Link in the description below. So until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.